but that's not the only side. For more than a few playmates and female Playboy executives, those bunny ears meant freedom and self-determination. At that point in time, I wasn't interested in marriage, but I was interested in Playboy Enterprises because women were taking their power. They were in command of themselves. So I thought, well, wow, wow, that's good to me. It's 1981. I'm in Chicago as the bunny mother. I had 70 bunnies underneath me. We did a lot of things to help rise these girls up. And it was exciting to me because I knew that I could move up the ladder in corporate. My next guest says Playboy and its iconic founder were good for her, too. Brandi Roderick was a Playmate in the late 90s and Playmate of the Year in 2000. She dated Hugh Hefner for a year after that, and uh, then she launched a successful series of, uh, well, career in acting and in business as well. She calls her Playboy years a, quote, wonderful learning experience sisterhood in the true sense of the word. Uh, Brandy Roderick, thank you. Thank you so much and welcome to the program. I appreciate you coming on. So you heard the last Hi, interview. Ashley. You know the, the A&E series is coming out saying there were all sorts of icky things going on, but you have a very different um, feel for what happened when you were at the Playboy Mansion. Tell me. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for me it was, um, <laughs> I have a real fond and love for Hef. Uh, he was a is or was a wonderful person. Uh, I learned so much from him. I learned uh, about art. I learned about music, you know, big band and jazz and not, you know, smooth jazz, real jazz, uh, old classic films. Um, I learned, uh, I learned grace from Hef. That's one thing that uh, I learned and got to see firsthand is the way that this major iconic man who's super famous would react with everybody. Um, he'd have people coming up to him and wanting to take pictures and talking to him, and he was just so graceful. Um, and that's something that you don't really see a lot of times from uh, celebrities in Hollywood. Um, so Sandra, and, you know, the pictures some we're of the showing, most amazing um, they they show all these beautiful women, which is typically what we would always see, right? We'd always see a picture of half surrounded, either two, four, six, or eight beautiful women, and they all looked exactly the same. And I just wonder from your perspective, how did that feel just to be one of them as opposed to someone special? Um, I felt very special. I was playmate of the month, I was playmate of the year. Uh <laughs> I, I feel very, very special. Um, the fact that he likes blondes, I think some people have types. Some people like brunettes, some people like blondes. His, he just happened to like uh, blondes. And then what about the, the accusations and revelations of some of the seedier stuff that, uh, that people say mm -hmm. happened? The quaaludes, which some of the people who were there said sure. were leg spreaders. There were rotating prescriptions. Uh, the, uh, the pig night, which was, you know, um, a, a collection of women off the street who mm -hmm. were, some were prostitutes, some were young people, plied with alcohol, uh, passed off to older men. What, what do you make of those allegations? Well, you're talking to somebody who is, was there in the 70s. Um, for me, it was not like that whatsoever. In fact, uh, there was one night at one party when uh, security came to Hef and said there's somebody doing cocaine in the bathroom, a certain celebrity, which I won't mention the name, of course, but uh, he had them kicked out and never allowed up at the mansion again. He was very much against drugs. So I, maybe in the 70s they were having fun, I don't know, but from what she's explaining, it sounds like she's talking a lot about um, these men that go to the parties. I didn't hear her saying Hef is doing those things. What I heard her say is that all these men are around, the men are doing this, the men are preying on these young girls. How about the girls that are there preying on these rich men? I mean, come on, this, that's ridiculous. It's, it, it's natural. Oh, wow, they went down Sunset Boulevard to pick up girls? Are you kidding me? That's what everybody does. <laughs> you go, uh, the guys go to bars to pick up girls. They've been drinking for forever. I mean, that's what people do when they go out. So I, I don't, I don't know. And, and, and he swept her off her feet. I mean, I would hope that somebody would sw sweep you off your feet and dance. Well, I think some light. of the allegations are that that she was 17 um, at the time, or 19 rather, she was 19, at the time, that's and, what and, she just said, and yeah. had never had a, a glass of champagne before, and then boom, out she went. But um, I wonder if well, you feel but she was there for, at her is, free will. <laughs> 
True, true. And she was they were, all their, right. their free will. Um, no one was holding a gun to their head. So do you, um, it must be very painful since you really, you know, have a fond, um, had a fond affiliation and a fond memory of, of Hugh Hefner. Do you feel that you have to defend his legacy because this is all coming out now? I mean, Holly Madison came out a few weeks ago saying that she'd had a, a bad experience there. Do you feel that mm -hmm. people like you has to, I, I feel, you know, have to come and help him out? Yes, I feel so sad that I even have to defend him because he is such an amazing person that's done so much for so many people human rights, civil rights, women's rights, LGBT rights, everything. And the fact that some women are coming out because maybe they what, have a book coming out, maybe they want another 15 minutes of fame, maybe they're out of it, whatever. And to do it now after he's dead where he cannot defend himself to me is disgusting. The fact that they would do that. Why not go and, and be on one of the other 500 documentaries that have been made while he was alive? and say these things about him. That's why well, you've never heard anything you, bad you know. all these years from anybody because yeah. he's not those things. Well, I do appreciate you coming on you with know, the other Harvey side of the Weinstein, story. That's what you know, uh, you've heard over the years well, he's yeah, a scumbag. That, 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 that's never a whole heard other that kettle of fish. Those are charges that were, yeah, were proven in a court of law and he's um, you know, sitting, sitting exactly. pretty in, in jail exactly. at this point. But Brandy Roderick, yeah. thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate your perspective and uh, thank you, Ashley. I appreciate you coming on. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I should you. mention as Bye -bye. well, those clips that we aired, uh, you can catch the A&E docuseries Secrets of Playboy that's starting on Monday uh, this coming week. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.